We are joined by one more witness. His name is Mr. G. Sung Ho. I blacked out. When I opened my eyes, I was lying in between the two railway tracks. The train had passed over my left leg and it was hanging from the rest of my body. North Korea stands out as one of the world's most oppressive regimes, its tight grip on power making it challenging to discern the realities faced by its citizens. While its nuclear capabilities draw widespread attention, much remains hidden from view. Operating under totalitarian rule, North Korea has compelled numerous individuals to flee, often at great peril. Some manage to successfully escape, while others face tragic fates. This article highlights 10 remarkable accounts of individuals who defected from North Korea, shedding light on the plight of those living under the thumb of the world's most repressive regime. Number 10. Military personnel escapes amidst gunfire pursuit. In November 2017, an astonishing incident transpired involving Oh Jong Sung, the son of a North Korean general. Jong Sung, a fellow soldier in the nation's military, found himself fleeing from gunfire unexpectedly, an escape he had not anticipated when he began his day. Raised in the comfort of his father's major general status, Jong Sung's life took an abrupt turn when circumstances compelled him to evade a barrage of bullets. The narrative unfolds with Jong Sung seeking a diversion from his troubles by enjoying a few drinks with friends at a bar. Following a lighthearted time with beers, he returned to his car and drove back toward the military base. As he approached the base, Jong Sung was obligated to stop at a checkpoint, but instead he broke through it initiating a life-or-death race. Realizing the gravity of his violation and the potential severe consequences, Jong Sung, in a drunken state, instinctively accelerated to the maximum. Other military officers joined the pursuit in their vehicles. Despite a close call involving a near crash into a ditch due to his high-speed driving, Jong Sung pressed on, reaching the border. With the fence in sight, he sprinted the remaining distance, with fellow officers hot on his trail. Despite sustaining five bullet wounds from his pursuers, Jong Sung successfully crossed the border. Unconscious from his injuries, he was discovered by South Korean soldiers who promptly ensured his safety and transported him to a hospital. Upon recovery, Jong Sung expressed satisfaction with his escape, stating that he harbored no regrets about leaving his homeland. He has escaped across that border for decades. Do you think that you're brave? It's not my bravery that kept me alive. It's the South Korean people. Who Number nine, elite North Korean defector and friend escape on improvised raft. Those people can't move freely. Why is that? Because of violation of rules. If it involves diplomacy or something like that. Going somewhere at a certain time means it's already... While military officers escaping from North Korea are rare, there are instances that defy the norm. The story we're delving into involves Chul Un Lee, a former North Korean spy who defected from the country alongside his friend using a makeshift raft. Serving in the National Intelligence Service, Chul Un Lee was part of a group responsible for monitoring over 1,000 people through informants. As a member of the elite, he enjoyed privileges such as unrestricted travel within North Korea. However, as Chul Un Lee continued his service, he became disillusioned with his country's status and the operations of its government. His turning point came when he interacted with a South Korean organization delivering rice for charity to prevent starvation in rural areas. This encounter prompted him to discuss life on the other side of the border with them, leading to the formulation of an escape plan with his friend. Being stationed in South Wanhai province, Chulun Li and his friend deemed it suspicious to travel all the way to the Chinese border. Instead, they considered the Yellow Sea, with a distance of 3.7 miles, as their escape route. Lacking access to a boat and aiming to avoid suspicion, they resolved to swim across the sea. Equipped with food and supplies, they entered the water and commenced their swim. After two hours, facing exhaustion, 
they jettisoned their possessions and continued swimming. Encountering challenges, including a patrol boat and adverse weather conditions, heightened their fear. Fearing they might be shot on sight if discovered by North Korean officers, they hid as the unidentified patrol boat approached. Eventually, fatigue set in, compelling them to abandon swimming. With minimal clothing, they improvised a raft using plastic found on an island and old wooden pallets, securing them with styrofoam. Hours passed on the makeshift raft until South Korean officers discovered them, unaware that they had long crossed the border and were now in South Korean territory, having successfully navigated the perils of the Yellow Sea. Number 8. Ji Seong Ho's Remarkable Escape on Crutches Escaping from North Korea demands tremendous effort, as evidenced by the previous accounts. Whether by driving, swimming, or walking, it requires immense determination and courage. Now, consider the audacity of attempting such a feat as a disabled person. This is precisely what Ji Seong Ho accomplished. Ji Seong Ho's journey began in 1996 during North Korea's severe famine. Like many others, Ji and his siblings faced starvation resorting to eating grass and rats to survive. Determined to find a better means of sustenance for his family, Ji attempted to steal coal from a train to trade for food. However, in the midst of this desperate act, he collapsed from hunger and was tragically struck by the train, resulting in a life-altering disability. Despite this setback, Ji refused to succumb to despair. He embarked, he on, embarked a on a daring escape, escape from North Korea, from North Korea traversing, traversing a harrowing 6,000-mile journey, journey on crutches. Crossing the treacherous Tumen River into China, he eventually made his way southward through Laos and Thailand. Each step of the arduous journey served as a testament to Ji's indomitable spirit and unwavering determination. Upon reaching South Korea, Ji was provided with essential medical care including a prosthetic arm and leg. Nearly two decades later, he continues to advocate for the rights of North Korean defectors, working tirelessly to disseminate information into the isolated nation. Ji's remarkable story gained international attention when he was invited to the United States by President Trump. There, he shared his journey and proudly displayed the crutches that accompanied him on his escape from North Korea. These crutches serve as a poignant symbol of Ji's resilience and the extraordinary lengths he traversed to attain freedom. They stand as a reminder of his remarkable journey and the profound transformation he has undergone. The government soon provided it. I wanted to share this joy with my father. I have contacted North Korea. Finally, I got in touch with acquaintances in my hometown. But I was shocked to hear that my father had passed away. Number 7. Jo Song Gil's Defection The phenomenon of defection from North Korea extends beyond ordinary citizens. Even high-ranking officials seek refuge from the totalitarian regime. Jo Song Gil, a prominent figure within the North Korean government, made headlines when he defected to another country. As a senior diplomat serving at the North Korean embassy in Rome, Joe held the position of acting ambassador until his tenure neared its end in 2018. However, he and his wife vanished without a trace, prompting speculation about their whereabouts for nearly two years. The sudden disappearance raised questions throughout North Korea, leaving authorities baffled about Joe's absence from his diplomatic post. The mystery surrounding Joe's whereabouts persisted until South Korean lawmaker Ha Tae Kyung confirmed reports of his defection to South Korea in 2019. Ha Tae Kyung's announcement provided clarity, confirming that Joe Song Gil had sought refuge in South Korea and was under the protection of the government. Joe's defection marked a significant event, making him the highest profile government official to defect from the North Korean regime since Tai Kyung Ho, the former deputy ambassador to the United Kingdom, fled to South Korea in 2016. The circumstances surrounding Joe's defection remain shrouded in mystery. Italy found itself without a North Korean ambassador following the expulsion of Pyongyang's former envoy in 2017, 
subsequent to the country's sixth nuclear test. Joe had joined the embassy in Rome as the third secretary in May 2015, according to statements from South Korean lawmakers. His sudden departure caught even the Italian foreign ministry by surprise, as they received notification from the North Korean embassy that Joe and his wife had vacated the premises. Only Joe's daughter returned to North Korea four days later, accompanied by female staff from the embassy, seeking reunion with her grandparents. The revelation of Joe and his wife's defection, concealed for two years, shed light on their decision to seek asylum elsewhere. Despite the secrecy surrounding their departure, Joe Song Gil's defection served as a stark reminder of the ongoing struggles within North Korea and the lengths individuals are willing to go to seek freedom. Number 6. Ji Yong Min Woo's Unique Defection While many North Korean defectors face perilous journeys to escape the oppressive regime, Ji Yong Min Woo's defection story stands out for its unconventional approach. As a former soldier in North Korea, Ji made a calculated decision to leave his homeland. Unlike others who risk their lives in daring escapes, Ji approached the border guards and expressed his desire to leave the country. Remarkably, being fellow military men, they allowed him to depart without incident or injury, marking the beginning of his journey to freedom. Departing North Korea in his military uniform, Ji recognized the need to discard it upon reaching safety understanding the potential suspicion it could raise in other countries. Arriving in Thailand, he exchanged his uniform for civilian clothing borrowed from friends, safeguarding his uniform and ID card in case of a future return to North Korea, where they hold significant value. In North Korea, wearing his uniform daily was essential for Ji's safety and status, earning him respect and deterring potential conflicts. However, upon arriving in South Korea, he surrendered his uniform to intelligence officials to verify his defection and dispel any suspicions of espionage. Despite this, he acquired a new summer uniform made of cotton, which he wears on occasions such as appearances on Now On My Way To Meet You, a talk show where North Korean defectors share their experiences and reflections. Ji Yong Min Woo's journey highlights the diverse strategies employed by defectors and the challenges they face in adapting to new environments while preserving their identities. His story offers a unique perspective on the complexities of defection and the resilience of those seeking freedom from oppression. Number 5. Park Hyun Woo's Daring Escape the saga of the Park family unfolds on a different plane compared to other defection stories. At 26 years old, Park Hyun Woo and his father found themselves relentlessly harassed by the North Korean military following the departure of Park's mother and sister. Enduring threats and arrests, they reached a breaking point in their resilience. On the night of February 7, 2017, Park Hyun Woo and his father made a life-altering decision to leave their home in North Hamgyong province for good. Mindful of avoiding suspicion, they departed separately and rendezvoused later at the semi-frozen Tumen River, which forms the border between China and North Korea. Despite enjoying relative comfort in North Korea, courtesy of remittances from their family, Park and his father embarked on their journey equipped with a flash drive containing vital information and a small amount of rat poison as a precaution against discovery. Their passage across the icy waters proved arduous, with freezing clothes and harsh conditions testing their resolve. Nevertheless, they persevered and successfully crossed the border, where one of their sisters awaited their arrival on the Chinese side of the river. United once more, the trio clandestinely navigated under a fence and sought refuge in a safe house. Here, Park Hyun Woo and his father symbolically discarded their clothes and buried their North Korean leader lapel pins, bidding farewell to their oppressive past. The story of Park Hyun Woo's escape epitomizes the courage and determination of individuals seeking freedom from tyranny, even at great personal risk. Number 4. No Kum Sok's Daring MiG-15 Defection In the realm of surprising military defections, No Kum Sok's story stands out as one of the most remarkable. 
A Korean-American engineer and aviator, No Kum Sok held the rank of senior lieutenant in the Korean People's Army and anti-air force during the Korean War. No Kum Sok's journey into the military took an unconventional turn during the Korean War when he applied to be an officer in the Korean People's Navy. Despite initially lying about his lack of experience, he received guidance from his history teacher and successfully passed the pilot selection test. This catapulted him to the rank of ensign, and he underwent flight training in Manchuria, swiftly climbing the ranks to senior lieutenant. Throughout the Korean War, No Kum Sok completed over 100 combat missions. The climax of No Kum Sok's story unfolded on the morning of September 21, 1953. In an audacious move, he defected from North Korea by flying his MiG-15 from Sunan, just outside Pyongyang, to Kimpo Air Base in South Korea. The astonishing journey took a mere 17 minutes, with No Kum Sok reaching speeds of 1,000 kilometers per hour. Remarkably, North Korean aircraft failed to pursue him, and he went undetected by American air or ground forces as the U.S. radar near Kimpo was temporarily shut down for routine maintenance. In a twist of fate, No Kum Sok unintentionally landed in the wrong direction on the runway, narrowly avoiding a collision with an F-86 Sabre jet. This unplanned landing turned out to be a stroke of luck, as it shielded him from immediate detection and interception. Upon landing, No Kum Sok parked the MiG aircraft between two Sabre jets, symbolically tearing up a picture of Kim Il-sung in the cockpit. He then surrendered to approaching security guards at the airbase, signaling his peaceful intentions and sealing his successful escape from North Korea. The daring and swift nature of No Kum Sok's defection adds a unique chapter to the annals of Cold War-era military history. Number 3. Song Bayok's Heart-Wrenching Journey The tale of Song Bayok encapsulates both tragedy and resilience. In 2000, Bayok and his father embarked on a perilous journey to cross the Tumen River, driven by the devastating famine gripping North Korea. However, their attempt ended in tragedy when Bayok's father drowned during the crossing. The desperation of the famine compelled Bayok and his father to brave the river's currents, despite their lack of knowledge about its depth and hazards. As they ventured into the water, Bayok tied their clothes together with a rope and implored his father never to let go. Tragically, in the midst of their crossing, Bayok's father slipped from his grasp and drifted away, leaving Bayok utterly devastated. In a desperate bid to save his father, Bayok pleaded with North Korean guards for assistance, only to be met with indifference. Instead of aiding him, they subjected Bayok to further cruelty, handcuffing him and subjecting him to torture. Bayok endured four months of imprisonment in Chongjin prison camp before his eventual release. Despite the trauma and suffering he endured, Bayok's resolve remained unbroken. Fueled by his determination to escape the oppressive regime, he embarked on a journey of defection, ultimately succeeding in his quest for freedom. The harrowing experiences of loss and persecution only served to strengthen Bayok's determination to forge a new path for himself, making his story both heartbreaking and inspiring. Number 2. Kim Ryan Hui's Complex Journey People in the South say defection, but I'm not a defector. Defectors are people who have left the North because they disliked it or for some reason wanted to leave. Kim Ryan Hui's story defies the conventional narrative of North Korean defections, as she embodies a rare example of a patriot torn between two worlds. Her saga began in 2011 when she sought medical treatment in China, only to find herself thrust into a world vastly different from her own. Struggling to pay her bills, Kim Ryan Hui found herself drawn into the underground world of North Korean defectors, lured by promises of financial prosperity in South Korea. However, upon arriving in Seoul, her intentions took a startling turn as she expressed a desire to return to North Korea. Her decision to return sparked a flurry of media attention and diplomatic scrutiny with North Korea calling for her repatriation and South Korea expressing skepticism and concern. 
There are fears that she may attempt to traverse back to North Korea through China, raising complex geopolitical implications. For Kim Ryan Hui, her paramount concern has been reuniting with her daughter and husband in Pyongyang, driving her to advocate for her cause through various channels, including talks and petitions to the United Nations. In her eyes, she sees herself as a stranger trapped in a foreign land, yearning for the familiarity and connection of her homeland. Kim Ryan Hui's journey highlights the complexities of identity, loyalty, and the enduring ties that bind individuals to their homeland, even in the face of adversity and uncertainty. Her story serves as a poignant reminder of the human cost of political divides and the longing for familial reunification amidst geopolitical tensions. Number 1. A Family's Courageous Escape Sometimes the pursuit of a better life prompts families to embark on extraordinary journeys. In a remarkable incident, a South Korean Navy ship discovered a five-ton wooden boat carrying 22 North Korean defectors across the West Sea. The boat was spotted approximately 38 kilometers south of the de facto maritime border, the northern limit line, and 41 kilometers west of Dicheong Island. Among the defectors were 12 males and 10 females, including eight children, with three of them under the age of 10. Crossing such a vast expanse of water is a daunting feat, and only a few North Koreans dare to attempt sea escapes due to the inherent risks, including the possibility of drifting at sea. The analysis provided by a South Korean security official highlighted the courage exhibited by this family seeking a new life. The West Sea escape route is not commonly chosen, with only a small percentage of North Koreans opting for this perilous journey. As of the analysis, 112 North Koreans had fled from the seaport of Nampo and 334 from South Wanghe province, which borders the West Sea by the previous year. It's important to note that these sea escapes represent just 2% of the total 21,294 defectors who had reached South Korea as of April that year. The story of this family's escape serves as a testament to the enduring desire for freedom and a brighter future, even in the face of significant challenges. As stories of North Korean defections continue to unfold, each escape serves as a reminder of the human pursuit of hope and liberty. If you found any particular story intriguing, we invite you to share your thoughts in the comment section below.